Many cultures have a name for their everyman. In England, it's Joe Bloggs or Tommy Atkins. In Poland, Jan Kowalski fills the bill. In Puerto Rico, you'll likely bump into Juan del Pueblo out on the street. Jean Dupont resides in France. Like the U.S., John Doe is used in New Zealand, a name that dates back to the age of the Magna Carta. In the United States, another moniker that is used is John Q. Public. This generic name is used to denote a hypothetical common man. This average Joe represents the randomly selected man on the street. The roots of John Q. Public, according to Hess and Northrop's Drawn and Quartered, The History of American Political Cartoons, seems to go back to Frederick Opper's Mr. Common People, who was the symbol of the average American and appeared in the arena in 1905. Opper's character was drawn as a bewildered, bald man whose hat was a bit too small and who was subject to the whims of big businesses, monopolies, and greed. Twenty-five years later, as the Great Depression began, John Q. Public as an actual character emerged from the pen of Vaughn Shoemaker onto the pages of the Chicago Daily News, where Shoemaker began his career in cartooning in 1922. Shoemaker's Everyman influenced fellow editorial cartoonist Jim Lang's Mr. Voter, a similarly-looking, glasses-wearing, and mustachioed man clad with a fedora. The Oklahoma State Senate eventually adopted Lang's character as the state's official editorial cartoon. Vaughn Shoemaker, who died in 1991, was a Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist for the Chicago Daily News, and his work is as relevant today as it was when he sketched it decades ago. Along with being an acknowledged cartoonist, Shoemaker was a Christian whose work often displayed his convictions. Enrolling in the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts in 1918, Shoemaker found himself in a class that was overcrowded and with many waiting to get in. After the first three months, the instructor began to weed out those he felt were least likely to succeed. The first one picked was Shoemaker. Trying to redirect Shoemaker to another career, the instructor bluntly told him, You'll never become a cartoonist in a thousand years. Twenty years later, he had won his first Pulitzer Prize. During his career, he also won the National Headliners Award, two National Safety Top Awards, 11 Freedom Foundation gold medals, and topping them all off with an honorary degree from Wheaton College and his second Pulitzer Prize. After leaving art school sooner than anticipated, Shoemaker took an apprenticeship in the art department of the Chicago Daily News laying the groundwork for his 44 years of successful cartooning. At the age of 20, he found himself with his first major break. The chief cartoonist for the news left to take a position in New York City. His assistant had gone to take another position there as well, and the second assistant had to leave because of illness in his family. Shoemaker's boss demanded, Draw something, anything, until I can get a cartoonist somewhere. The story has it that right there in the chief cartoonist's studio, Shoemaker fell to his knees and asked God for help, and off his pen came a cartoon. He was known at the Chicago Daily News as a gospel cartoonist, because it was said that he started each cartoon on his knees with a prayer. He knew that some laughed. Some kidded me, Shoemaker said. I laughed back. There I stood, God helping me. I could do no other, echoing the words of Martin Luther. Shoemaker won his first Pulitzer in 1938 for a drawing, The Road Back, with a World War I soldier marking backwards into war and a shocked world saying, You're going the wrong way. His cartoons were criticized by Hermann Goering, who described Shoemaker's work as horrible examples of anti-Nazi propaganda. In 1947, he won his second Pulitzer for a cartoon titled Still Racing His Shadow, in which a worker named New Wage Demands tries to outrun his cost-of-living shadow. By 1963, this Pulitzer Prize-winning artist's cartoons were syndicated to more than 75 newspapers. He worked at the Daily News for 27 years and then moved to the New York Herald Tribune, then the Chicago American, and American's successor, Chicago Today, where he retired. By the time he laid down his pen in retirement in 1972, he had drawn 14,000 cartoons.